Thank you, Hannah, for that. Again, welcome to our service this morning. We're glad you're here. If you had plans to be here last Sunday night, I hope you didn't show up. Um, there was just weather, we just wouldn't let us, and we didn't have any electricity anyway. So we're thankful uh, for your patience with us and the fact that the Lord gave us a beautiful day today uh, to have this special program. We think it's a big deal to uh, pronounce the real meaning of Christmas in this program entitled The Greatest Gift. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter number 6, that the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation, came through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you'll see in this program, a story about a young girl who thought the greatest gift was something that you could hold in your hand when her family was trying to tell her, no, it's something that you have in your heart. And so enjoy the music, the drama, the presentation of this story, The Greatest Gift.
Christmas, help me be all I should be for Missy's sake. It's going to be so hard on her, Lord, going through the holidays for the first time without her mother. She needs you so badly, Lord. Somehow, this Christmas season, use me to draw her to yourself. Help her to receive your son, the greatest gift of all. Grandma, Grandma, I'm home. Hi, Missy. How was school today? Tommy tried to kiss me again. He did? And what did you do? I hit him right in the mouth and told him that I was a young lady. Missy! Well, Angela told me that proper young ladies don't kiss until they've been married at least 10 or 20 years, maybe. Is that right? Besides, I didn't hit him real hard. Grandma, what do you want for Christmas more than anything else in the whole world? Do you want to know what I want more than anything else in the whole world? What is it, Grandma? Have you thought any more about asking Jesus into your heart to be your Savior? Grandma, I'll take care of that later. Missy, you've been putting it off later for months now. Remember how concerned your mother was for you? Don't put it off any longer. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Grandma, I'll get around to it later, really. Just tell me what you want for Christmas. Missy, more than anything, I want to see you celebrate Christmas in your heart. Oh, Grandma. Jesus came to earth and laid aside his princely crown. Came to his creation, yet a room could not be found. At the special time of year, the call is heard anew. Will you hear his pleading voice? Let Christ be born in you. Christmas in your hearts. Make it Christmas in your hearts. Open wide the door and let Jesus in your heart. As the Savior knocks today, will you coldly turn? Make it Christmas in your heart. You may sing the carols that exalt the baby's name. But when Jesus calls to you, the answer's still the same. There's no room for Jesus, he is crowded out again. Will you open wide your heart and let the Savior in? Christmas in your heart, make it Christmas in your heart. Open wide the door and let Jesus in your heart as the Savior knocks today will you coldly turn away this Christmas make it Christmas in your heart make it Christmas in your heart Why don't I get you a fancy necklace to match the pretty wedding ring that Grandpa gave you? I appreciate that more than you know, but your grandfather had to work a long, work very hard and save for a long time to sit by that ring. He sure must have been a wonderful man. He was, Missy. A lot like your father. Well, if Grandpa could do it, I can too. I'll get a job and save everything I make. 
so you can get the fanciest necklace I can find so you can be proud of it and wear it all the time, just like you wear your ring. Grandma, where is your ring? <sighs> Listen to us jabbering on like a couple of old hens when there's work to be done. Your father said to have your homework done before he gets home for dinner, so you better head upstairs and get busy. Okay, Grandma, I'm going. And I need to get this table set. Anybody home? In the kitchen, Robert. Hi, Mom. Busy day? I'll say. And all the other salesmen tell me it just gets worse every day between now and Christmas. Well, at least you finally have a job now. I'm sorry, Mom. I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining. It's just we're so far behind on all of our bills. Bills from the hospital, bills from the funeral home, and here's one from the mortgage company. Urgent, immediate attention required. Final notice, remit $918 immediately or foreclosure proceedings will commence on December 8th. I talked with the real estate agent today. He wants to put the house up for sale this weekend. Have you told Missy about the house yet? Yeah, we've talked about it, but she doesn't know it's going to be this soon. It's just been so hard on her mom, losing her mother just six months ago, and now the house. I wish Nancy were here. I miss her so much. Your father's been gone almost ten years, and I still miss him every day, especially at Christmas time. But the Lord has grown dearer and dearer to me still. I do remember how hard it was in the beginning. So very hard. I guess this old mother of yours is a poor substitute for a wife. Don't be silly, Mom. You can't imagine how much we appreciate you coming over here every day, doing the laundry, cooking our meals, and taking care of Missy after school. She wouldn't have made it without you. She loves you so much. I'm concerned about her, Robert. Every time I talk to her about getting saved, she keeps putting it off. Well, I haven't been too much help in that department. We hardly ever went to church before Nancy got sick. Hi, Daddy. Maybe you'll help me. Grandma won't give me any ideas, and I want to get her the greatest gift in all the world for Christmas. Well, I'm sure we can think of something, Missy. I thought of the perfect idea. What is it, Grandma? How about you make me a great big Christmas card with your picture on the front? Grandma, that's what I gave you last year. And I liked it so much, I think I'll take another one this year. You're just saying that. And I'm going to get you the greatest, bestest, nicest, biggest present you've ever gotten in your whole life. You'll see. I'll stop by Moorhead's jewelry store on the way home from school tomorrow, and I'll bet Mr. Moorhead will have just what I'm looking for. You better stay away from that place, Missy. Unless you find a gold mine between now and tomorrow. It won't hurt to look. Don't, don't go there, honey. I don't think Mr. Moorhead has anything we can afford anyway. My lands, why are we so town in the mouth? It's Christmas time. We don't need any fancy gifts to celebrate Jesus' birth. Why, when I was a child, if we were lucky enough to get an apple or an orange, we would be excited. This year, let's just have an old-fashioned, simple kind of Christmas.
Christmas cards in the mail, Daddy? Well, I don't think so. Well, here's an unusual one. No stamp, no return address. All it says is from a Christian friend. Daddy! Robert! Why, there's $900 here, but who would send us that? Daddy, we can keep our house. We can keep our house. Praise the Lord. Yes, Mom. Praise the name of Jesus. Young lady, get your hands off that glass. Why, oh, I, I just cleaned it yesterday. Kids these days, always making trouble. I suppose you're going to call me Mr. Sorehead like all those other rowdy street urchins? No, sir, I'd never do that. Well, well, why are you sneaking around my store then? I'm not sneaking, sir. I'm shopping for a Christmas present, a special Christmas present, like that necklace right there. It goes perfectly with that ring next to it. 
and that ring is just like my grandmother's. Wait a minute. You're the Widow Miller's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, if she sent you down here to try and get more money out of me for that worn-out ring of hers, it's not going to work. She got her $900, and she's not getting a penny more. Now, with that outdated setting, who knows when I'll get rid of that old relic. So that's what happened to her ring. You took it. You I, took Grandma's ring. I didn't take anything. Your grandmother needed some cash, and, well, I... I did the gentlemanly thing, and I helped her out. And why don't you just run along to Franklin's 5 and 10 over there? They cater to ragamuffins. But I want to buy something right here. Oh, you do, do you? And what might that be? I want to buy my grandmother's ring back. Oh, okay, let me see your cash. Mr. Moorhead, if you'll give me some time, I'll get the money for you, I promise. That's what I thought. Now run along. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Please give me some time, Mr. Moorhead. I promise I'll get the money. This isn't a charity, young lady. This is a business. That ring is going to make someone very happy. But you can't sell my grandmother's ring. Get, get going, girl, before I lose my temper. I just can't believe it. How could she sell her wedding ring? We've got to get it back, Daddy. But how? Is there any way to get the $900 back? Well, I wish there were, but I put it in the mail last night. Then I'll have to earn it. Missy, do you realize how much $900 is? And there's only two weeks until Christmas. We'll have a garage sale and sell a whole bunch of things like my toys, my bicycle, my nice dresses. What about those old golf clubs? golf clubs in the garage. My golf clubs? <laughs> well, I guess we could get a little bit of money out of those, but $900 is a lot of money. I don't want you to get your hopes up. I won't just hope, I'll work. I'll sell Christmas cards and wrapping paper and cookies and candy, and maybe I could even sell my kit and JoJo. That's very generous, sweetheart, but $900 is a lot of money. I don't want you to get too excited about... Won't Grandma be excited? It'll be the greatest gift there ever was. Just don't tell her we know about the ring. Please, Daddy. Okay, just don't get your hopes too high. We've got to get it back, Daddy. Grandma sold her wedding ring for us, and I just love her so much. I know, but there are only 12 days until Christmas. That's okay. I'll make it, and I'll sell everything. Lord Jesus, I know you don't have any reason to listen to me, but I really need your help. We sold everything we could in the garage sale, and I've been going door to door selling Christmas cards and all kinds of things every day and all day. But even with Dad's bonus check and all of my savings, we still only have $450, and it's just a few days till Christmas. If you're listening, Lord, show me that you're more than just a baby in a manger. Lord, Please give me a miracle. Travel to a manger and a time so far away. God by a holy light that can still be seen today. Catch a glimpse of glory nestled in a bed of straw for this tiny baby is the mighty Lord of all. He is more than just a baby, he's the God of Abraham, he 
is more than just a memory. He's the ever great I am. More than just a dim reflection, Jesus Christ, the living word. He is more than just a baby. He's the Child, you're freezing. What are you doing outside in this blizzard? I'm selling things for Christmas, Dr. Angel. But it's dangerous to be out in weather like this. A little bit longer and you might would have wound up in the hospital. I know, Doctor, but I've got to sell these things. I've just got to make more money. Oh, Missy, it can't be that bad. Tell me about it. Why does a young girl like you need money so badly? Well, it's not really me, I guess. It's Grandma. Your grandmother needs money? What's wrong, Missy? Several weeks ago, Daddy and I were going to lose our house. Then somebody put an envelope in our mailbox with $900 in it. I was so excited till I found out that Grandma had done it. She sold her wedding ring to Mr. Moorhead so we wouldn't lose our house. Well, that sounds just like your grandmother. She is a very special lady. Did you know that she was my Sunday school teacher when I was your age, Missy? In fact... She's the one who led me to the Lord. Now, you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior yet, have you, Missy? Well, not exactly. So she sold her ring. Well, that is really hard to believe. I remember how much she loved that ring. In Sunday school, she used to tell us how your grandfather scrimped and sacrificed to buy her that ring because of his love for her. But then she would always tell us that God loved us even more, and they sacrificed his own son because of that great love for us. Dr. Angel, please help me. Wouldn't you like to buy some Christmas cards or wrapping paper or maybe this pretty plant? Well, it just so happens that we are running a little low on Christmas supplies, Missy. How much more money do you need? $382. And do you expect to have that all by tomorrow? I wanted to get Grandmother the greatest gift in all the world for Christmas. I even asked the Lord to help me, but I don't suppose he'd have any reason to listen to me. Even though you might not be listening to the Lord, Missy, he is listening to you. Here, I'll just make this check out to Mr. Moorhead. There. How's that? $382. Oh, doctor, thank you, thank you. Merry Christmas, Missy. God did hear your prayers, and he loves you very much. 
Doctor, it's a miracle, a real live miracle. Mr. Moorhead, Mr. Moorhead, I came to get Grandma's ring back. I have the money now. I'm, I'm sorry, young lady, but the ring is already sold. Already sold? But what's that in your hand? Why, it, it's the ring, of course, but the gentleman who's buying it should be here any time now to pick it up. Oh, Lampkins, I can't wait to see it. You have such impeccable taste. Thank you, dear. Oh, Mr. Fairweather, good to see you. And this must be your Hello, Mr. Wife. Morehouse. I believe my husband has picked out a ring for me? Yes, it's this exquisite masterpiece right here. And, oh, let me help you try it on. Fits like a glove. It was made for you. $1,200 is a lot of money, though. $1,200. $1,200 is nothing for this exquisite masterpiece. Notice the setting. It's, it's very unusual. And, and I once saw... A ring just like this one in a shop, an exclusive shop in Paris, selling for $10,000. The French are known for the superb taste. I compliment you, ma'am. It takes a well-trained eye to notice this nice setting. Yes, it does. I, this is not just some run-of-the-mill ring made in some little back shop in Timbuktu, ma'am. No, this was uh, an heirloom perhaps worn by royalty, I'm, I'm sure of it. Little girl, you look intelligent. What do you think of my ring? I really think it looks out of place on someone so young. It kind of reminds me of something that my grandmother would wear. Ah, that is exactly what I was thinking. Lampkins, I spend thousands of dollars a year trying to make myself look young, and you go and dress me up like a wrinkly old antique? You may keep your ring, Mr. Poorhead. I'm so sorry, sir. Come on, Lambkins. We aren't time for idle chatter. We're almost late for my aerobics class. Button up your jacket now. You mustn't get chilled. Yes, dear. My, that was a sweet little girl, wasn't she, Lambkins? Yes, dear. Whatever you say, dear. 
you little imp children these days just don't know their places. Well, back when I was a boy... Please don't be upset, Mr. Moorhead. I have your money right here on $900 of it. $900? This isn't charity, young lady. This is a business. Please, Mr. Moorhead, I don't have a penny more. I'll do anything. I'll stay after school oh. and do anything you say. Oh, Bob, take the silly ring. Oh, thank you, Mr. Moorhead. You're just wonderful. You're just... Oh, enough of the mushy stuff. Just take the ring before I change my mind. I just can't believe I did it. It's like a dream. I really got Grandma's ring back. I sure am proud of you, Missy, but let's not forget to thank the Lord. Won't Grandma be excited? It's the, per it's the most perfect present she'll ever get in her whole life. I don't know about that, Missy. There was one gift even more perfect. More perfect? That's right. God's people used to bring him two perfect gifts every day. What kind of gifts? Well, usually they were lambs, but they couldn't be just any ordinary lamb. Each lamb had to be free from any blemish or defect. God sure must have had a lot of lambs given to him. What did he do with them all? Well, God appointed men called priests and uh well these men killed the lambs that's terrible but why well he was trying to teach them that the only way to have their sins forgiven was by the shedding of blood why did they have to kill so many lambs they sure must have had a lot of sin to pay for yes they did just like you and me in fact all of us have an awful lot of sin to pay for and all of us deserve to spend eternity in a terrible place called hell. But I don't want to kill any lambs. Don't worry, sweetheart. We're not going to kill any animals. Besides, the blood of animals can't really take away sin anyway. Well, then why did God command it? Well, he was trying to show his people something he was going to do in the future. He was trying to show them that one day he would send a lamb straight from heaven, the most perfect lamb of all. And the blood of God's lamb would pay for every sin that had ever been committed. Has God already sent his perfect lamb? Yes, he did. And did those mean priests kill him too? I'm afraid so, honey, but God's lamb wanted to die. He wanted to? Why? Because he knew his blood had to be shed, or it wouldn't be possible to have your sin forgiven, or to live with him in heaven forever. You mean God's perfect lamb died for me?
Can I let Grandma open a present tonight? It is Christmas Eve, and I just can't wait any longer. Sure, I think that would be all right, sweetheart. I'm excited to see what Grandma's response is going to be, too. We better make sure she sits down before she opens it. She might faint. <laughs> well, I guess anything can happen, I suppose. Shh, here she comes. Come on, you two. Supper's almost ready. Grandma, will you open your present right now? Um, I would, but I have to finish icing the cake for dinner. Then how about right after supper? I don't know. I'll get around to it later. But, Grandma, you won't believe what I got you. It's the greatest present you've ever gotten in your whole life. I'm sure it is, honey, but um, I still have to make cookies for Aunt Clara's. But it'll just take a second, Grandma. Um, I just don't know, honey. Maybe. But, Grandma, I can't wait. Grandma, hurry up and open your surprise. I can't wait to see the wonder in your eyes. Wait to wash the dishes, wait to sweep the crumbs. I'm biting my nails and I'm twiddling my thumbs. Cause I can't wait any longer. I can't wait, the feeling's getting stronger. I've waited long enough is really getting tough cause I can't wait I can't wait Grandma hurry up you're moving kinda slow any moment now I'm gonna lose control I'm trying to be patient I'm trying to be kind but if you don't hurry I'm gonna I'm glad all those cookies are finally done. Grandma, why won't you open your gift? I've waited and I've begged and waited and it cost me everything. It's been so hard to see, for me to see you so disappointed, honey. Do you want to know why I keep putting you off? Why, Grandma? I just wanted you to understand. Imagine how Jesus feels. Every time I talk to you about getting saved, you keep putting it off till later. He gave everything he had on the cross so that you could have eternal life and you keep rejecting his gift. Imagine how that makes him feel. Do you really think I've been hurting Jesus? I do, honey. And I'm sorry if I've upset you. I just really wanted you to understand. Now, where's this gift I keep hearing about? It's awful light for such a large package. You sure did go through a lot of trouble. I thought you wanted me to get into this in a hurry. This could take all night. <gasps> Missy, my ring. Child, how did you ever? My ring, it's so special. I love you, Grandma. I love you too, Missy. Grandma, I'm ready to receive Jesus. Let's pray right now. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, I never realized how much I was hurting you. Please forgive me for always telling you to wait till later. I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done. Come into my heart. I'm yours now, Lord, all of me. Thank you for dying for me, and thank you for the greatest gift of all, yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
service began, I quoted a verse, just the last part of a verse from Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. It speaks of the gift of God, but there's a first part of that verse that we need to be reminded of. The Bible tells us, for the wages of sin is death. That's some bad news. That's really bad news, and that affects every person born. What do we get for being born with a sinful nature? Death and hell. But thank God for the back end of that verse. But the gift of God. The gift of God. I'm sure already this season there has been an exchanging of gifts from friends and neighbors and maybe family. And yeah, for the next two weeks we're going to do a lot of uh, exchanging of gifts. But the best thing that you can ever open is not in a box or a bag or anything like that. It's your heart to the greatest gift of all. If you have 5,000 Christmas gifts all of your life, and still die and go to hell? Is it worth it to have rejected the greatest gift of all and not gotten anything under the tree? This, this presentation this morning is not just about, hey, see what we've done. It's about see what Christ did on the cross for you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And let me just ask you, this message was presented in drama and in song. And so the question for everyone here as... The question was for Missy, why are you putting off the greatest gift? Why are you putting off? I thank the Lord for a patient family for her that she finally realized she needed to receive Christ as her Savior. And may I ask you from the front row to the very back, have you received the greatest gift of all, the Lord Jesus Christ? That is the only thing that can save you from your sins. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe the Lord spoke to your heart more than just kind of jerked at uh, your heart a little bit or a tear from your eye about the sweetness of this story, but made you realize, have I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? Do I know for sure I'm going to heaven? If you would say this morning, Pastor Mike, you know, the Lord spoke to my heart, and I don't know that I really understand what Christmas is all about until this morning. And I'd like to receive that gift. I can't guarantee you that I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Just in the still.